if I'm gonna make a French onion soup empanada, I'm gonna make a proper French onion soup. If, if I could call what the food, the food is, it's stubbornly slow. Really, that's what you do to make great food. I think people are forgetting, even maybe before the pandemic, people are forgetting how food is made. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it, you know? Twenty twenty was a year that turned our world upside down, where we had to adapt to this new normal. In these tough times, many of us turned to food as a source of comfort, while an enterprising few saw it as an opportunity to start fresh. These are the pandemic kitchens. I'm Jen Herodia Slagel, and I'm the executive chef of Casa Luisa. This is Casa Luisa. It was built in 2018 by my mother. So her real name is Maria Luisa. And this is like her vision and her work. You know, she's had this team for 30, 40 years. It's kind of like, I guess, leaving a legacy. Our food here is actually um, like food that I grew up with. We, we always had empanadas at home growing up. I grew up eating tocino for breakfast and tapa, and we have a beef caldereta. That was a recipe of an employee of ours, like my mom's secretary, for like 40 plus years. The sisig is also her recipe. She passed it on to me but my version of it, of course. So our best sellers are our empanadas, of course. So it's the French onion soup empanada. Also our cured meats, so our natural cured meats, like the tocino and the tapa. But with the French onion soup empanada, like that one's like tedious, so we roast the bones, so we use like grass-fed bone marrow and um, neck bones. So we roast that until it's golden brown, and then we um, make a proper beef stock with that. We mix that with gruyere cheese. And then for the dough, so it's slicing the, the butter and mixing the dough and making sure that it's in the right temperature. And just like encasing it in uh, the filling in the dough and uh, freezing and baking it. And also egg washing, it's very important to get that golden crust on top. Before the pandemic, I was running a commissary kitchen in a manufacturing plant and we were supplying all these restaurants. Um, the pandemic hit and we had to basically slow that down. It's sleeping right now. We were in Makati, living in a two-bedroom condo during the pandemic until May. We had a chance to move here. It was just a blessing because I'm sure we're not the only ones that felt that, but it was really difficult to have two kids, you know, like, active and hyper in a enclosed two bedroom and nobody could go out. <laughs> Since I had the time, I had the perfect setting, I had uh, the opportunity to just focus on this. I did it for myself, so it is my brand and I mean this house is the inspiration as well. You know, this is such a uh, a much more healthy environment for them and even for us, just like all the trees and the sunlight and the fresh air. Right now it's really like a balancing act now that I'm working at home. 
And then it's managing my, my personal life with my family and my staff who are actually all in this house. So it works out. Like I've been working in kitchens for 15 years um, and it's just like really intense and non-stop. You know, I used to have like 30 employees, so now I have three. So, <laughs> um, but I'm not going to say it's better or worse, it's different. So the staff that I have right now for Casa Luisa wasn't really trained for the kitchen. You know, I had my yaya who became my cook, who became full-time, you know, working for Casa Luisa. And then Fred, who's our driver, said didn't want to go back to being a panadero. But I asked him and he's doing it and I'm so grateful, you know, he's so talented and skilled. Pumasok po ako dito kay Ma'am bilang isang family driver. Uh, nung minsan, galing kami sa Makati, natanong niya sa akin kung anong dati kong trabaho. Sabi ko, rap, nung araw, dati ako master baker, yung mga sinaunang baker. Yun nga, ang sabi niya sa akin, pwede ba daw kami mag-try? Eh, sabi ko, hindi ako sa kanya sumagot. Isang bisis, kasi siya nagluluto dito dati, siya nagbibig. Ngayon na hanggang sa marami na yung order, nakikita ko sa kanya, parang naawa naman ako magang maga siya nagluluto dito. Eh, sabi ko sa kanya, ako na dyan. Ayun, tumayo siya. Sa pagbalik niya, nakita niya, luto na lahat. At tingin ko, mas maganda pa yung luto ko sa kanya. <laughs> Fred, who's like a classically trained panadero, has his own ways of doing things. But at the end of the day, I want to keep him here. And if that's the only way, then we're gonna work with it together. Si Chef Jen kasi, yun, perfectionist siya, sobra sa pagkain. They like run the whole show. I just tell them, Alvin, 400 sa Sabado, kaya ba? Yes, Chef. Ang trabaho ko dito sa Casa Luisa ay mag-ready ng mga filling ng empanada. Ako rin po ang gumagawa ng portioning. Dati ako kasi nakajuti ako dun sa Makati. Yun, sabi na yung Chef, kung pwede akong dumuti dito sa Casa Luisa, Inugot niya ako dito. Ako, laki po salamat ko naman kasi ang dami-dami nawala ng trabaho. Pero ako, nandito pa rin. May trabaho pa rin. Sinib niya rin ako na maiwan dito. Dati is paggawa ng impinada, halos 300 lang nagagawa namin sa isang araw. Ngayon, kaya namin gumawa ng 700 tatlo kami. Dahil sa kanyang, kanyang style. This is something we never thought that we'd be doing pre-pandemic. I guess people love empanadas. You know, everything that goes out of here, I'm proud of. I think like what makes great comfort food is getting that feeling of nostalgia. Like, or making food for my kids, you know. Will, will it make them feel better after like a bad day? Like, will they remember this and ask for it again because they remembered it to be so good? So now that I hear good things like, it's so good, it's the best empanada, so it reminds me of this that I ate from like San Francisco. Some of them have actually become my friends, which is weird. But you know, I mean, what do you do during a pandemic? You can't meet new friends and you meet them through your business. <laughs> no. Everybody lives in Casa Luisa, my family. I want to make sure that um, 
you know, they enjoy Casa Luisa as well. Like, I have a karaoke machine. Like, sometimes they'll sing out there. So it's really like a family in a sense that, like, we care for each other. Each one of us, we all have our own, like, goals. You know, they, they provide for their families, and I want to make sure that I'm there to support them with that. And then also, like, I want them to feel at home. I don't want them to feel like this is just work, that it means more than that, because I see them more than just work. So my dream for Casa Luisa is for people to, I guess, know who we are. Like, we're from San Pedro, Laguna. I grew up here. This is our hometown. And for them to try the foods that I grew up eating. And, you know, and also for my staff to support them, even if they're not here anymore. And um, you know, they move on to another job or go back to their families. I still want to be there and make sure that you know, I'm supporting their dreams and they remember that I was always there to support their dreams. Mm -hmm.